in this next uh, portion that we're going to, we're going to get into talking about some of the things about the prophet Hosea, some of which I have uh, I have ministered. But again, you need to you need to because after I get past this, then I want to take you into where I really want you to go. But I got to make sure that somebody that gets a hold of this gets enough of the enough of the understanding of the general understanding of it that when I get back into this next area or the area probably after this area, that bless God they're going to have understanding of. Now you ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now, listen closely. The fullness of the Gentiles come in. When does the Gentile age going to end? The fullness of the Gentiles, when they come in, is what you're seeing the beginning of that's been fulfilled in your ears prophetically as you said here tonight. We are bringing to a close the Gentile age. The fullness of the Gentiles are doing what? They're coming in. If, in fact, I'm right, and I am, that the most of the church is Ephraim, uh, the, the younger brother of Manassas, and, that the, and, and the old patriarch said that he would do what? He would become the fullness and be known as the fullness of the Gentiles. And by them now, by you now, by I now, by us now coming into this thing, what are we doing? We're coming in and we're fulfilling this uh, right in the very, right in the very midst of it. And so all Israel shall be saved. Now see, here's the important people are always saying, well, when's Israel going to save? Real soon. There's going to be a big revival that's going to be involved because their eyes are going to get opened up, all right? As it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them that I, that I shall take away their sins. And he is going to do what? He's going to take away the sins that we have all committed. Judah and, and Ephraim. And bless God, he's going to do what? He's going to set us back in right order or the right array before him. And we are going to do what? We are going to absolutely produce uh, stuff that's un, un, unreal. Uh, uh, if, if you stop and think about this now, if, if somebody knows the number, it'd be great if you'll tell me because I, I don't know this number that I'm looking for. I don't have any idea how many millions there are of of the Arab uh, League that's over there. Does anybody have any ideas? Have you ever heard any numbers of how many millions there are of, of what would be the Muslim or the Arabs that are over there? Anybody know? At least a, a billion? Okay, then that, that's what I, I, I would, if I was just going to guess, that's what I'd say. The fact of it is that that there there they are, okay. All of that that league of all those nations, which again, uh, bless God, uh, Ishmael, you know that was the the, the the illegitimate son, if you will, um, of the old patriarch. And bless God, he said that he he said uh, unto unto uh, uh, Ishmael that he said, and you will be a, a, a great nation also. And he said one thing about them. He said they will be warring, a warring nation, always into war. And when they're not making war with somebody else, they'll make war with each other. What are they doing over in Iraq right now? Killing each other. And it's all a fulfillment of, of, of exactly what God is saying. And like I said, we are, we are coming to that time. And, and it's exciting to know that, that, you know, that you and I are here on this earth. Let's get to uh, uh, Luke 22. There's a scripture here that I want to use. Now, this, the 20th verse says, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, and this is when he's doing this, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, blood which I shed for you. Now, somehow again, and you've heard me, most of you heard me say, uh, the mistake that's been made that this was a new covenant. No, this is a New Testament in his blood. Well, what does that mean? It means the fact that the blood of that sacrificial lamb. See, we're coming to the, the festival of Rosh Hashanah, okay? And and the, the days of all that ends with Yom Kippur. And and uh, uh, and if you've never been in a Yom Kippur uh, service uh, and you can get down to the corn patch, well, we're going to, as Donna said, we're going we're gonna to be doing it. The Yom Kippur is called the fast. And, and uh, uh, we're going to participate. But you see, 
the fact of it is that what he was sent here to do was to continue the covenant. In other words, Christ came, Messiah came to continue the covenant. He didn't come to put an end to the covenant. And I know you get into what Paul said this and Paul said that, that the old was, the new was come. Well, Paul was talking about the Levitical priesthood is what Paul was talking about. Paul wasn't talking about the end of any of this. And, and I'm going to tell you to, to help you straighten some of this out uh, uh, as I have said many, many times, number one, Paul as a Pharisee took an oath, and that oath was very simple, that he would keep the letter of the law, and if he didn't, he consented to being stoned to death. All right, so so again, Paul jumped, jumped ship by being a Christian. Did the Sanhedrin want him dead? Yes, they did. Could they kill him? Not because he didn't keep the law. Okay, and when he brought the two brothers in before before Peter and the boys, and they said, take them out and get them, get, get them circumcised. What did Paul do? Stand up. Well, the law's out and we don't have to do that. No, Paul took them out and got them circumcised. Take your head this way, because that's what he did. Now, Paul's either a liar, or riding both sides of the fence, or the church has taught you wrong for a lot of years. And I'm going to tell you, as a prophet of God, the church has taught you wrong for a lot of years. Okay? Paul is still talking above everybody's heads and nobody is smart enough to understand enough to either go back and get the thing interpreted back from the Greek into the Hebrew and get it right to bless God to understand what was going on there. If you're going to believe somebody, believe Yeshua. Okay? If you'll just go to what Yeshua has to say about the law and not worry about the Apostle Paul. Now, let me tell you what the Apostle Paul would be known as if, in fact, he hadn't a jump ship. He would have been probably written about in what's called the Talmud. Okay, the, the rabbis, their writings are in, in, in a, 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 whatever you want to call it, uh, and they call it the Talmud. And it is their, their thoughts, their, their writings. And like I said, the thing you get in with Paul is that Paul was writing correction to these individual churches. And then we as a church jumped out here and we got all these sects of going of, of, of different types of things where women can't teach or preach in the church because Paul said that they were to suffer not a woman to speak in church and you don't have any idea in the world why he said that in that situation and and folks it just it's got crazy it just you know we we we, we heap teachers up 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 and our itching ears itched 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 and the next thing we know we're out in left field and out in left field and further out in left field it's time we come back in and begin to understand uh, that the Lord Yeshua said he did not come to do what? To destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. Okay? He came to fulfill it. And, God, and Paul even said, uh, and, and do away with the law, and he said, God forbid. You know, please, just, just go back to thinking about what Jesus has to say about this, and you're better off to study it that way. Because if you don't, you, your friends, and I know what your friends are doing to you. I've been there. I've heard all of it. You know, I... I need to tell this story. I, we got a couple of friends that made a trip over to uh, to to Israel, and uh, this brother said to me, he said, "Well, he said, you know, I heard you make the statement that what Paul was talking about when he said they weren't to keep the be keeping the the, the the law, that he was talking about the Talmud, the traditions of men." And he said, "I believed it, but he said I got over there and and he said I got around this guy. I think it was the guide." And this guy is, is an Orthodox Jew, definitely not a Christian. And anyway, he talked to, uh, ask him. He said, uh, you know, he said, uh, I, I would like to ask you a question. And so he started in and he started trying to, you know, uh, lead this up to that. And the guy stopped and turned to him. He said, you Christians are about to get this figured out now, aren't you? That Paul was talking about the Talmud. Not, 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 not the covenant of God. And folks, that is how I'm going to try to be nice here and not say stupid, but it's going to it's it's just going to have to be a word to use, I guess. But it's just how stupid we've gotten. We, you know, over and over and over and over, I keep saying it's going to take somebody with a good Jewish background to get in front of what the remnant and teach the remnant what the remnant never knew to start out with. That's called the church. That if you don't understand the fullness of this thing. You're going to have to get it with some people that bless God that understand, you know, and, and that's the reason I went back and I said, I said, you, you know, 
the, the, the Orthodox have laughed at the church for years because we celebrate Christmas on the 25th day of, of December. And they've laughed at us because, bless God, that we think that Jesus Christ, the Yeshua, was born in a manger with a bunch of cows and, and lambs and straw and, and all this stuff around. And he was born in a sukkah during a time which we're going to get together and, and uh, be doing here shortly is a Sukkot or Sukkot, whichever, wherever you live, as pronounced. It's another festival that's kept, all right? And the church doesn't know. Oh, the church doesn't say no, no. And, it was, and, and the Jews just laughed and he hauled and carried on. Can anybody here get the faintest idea of why they really didn't want to get involved with us? Huh? Thank you. Bless God, you're a better crowd than some of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's uh, let's go to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. God knows what He's doing, and and I wish I could say that I always know what God's doing, but I don't. You know, it's kind of a, with me and the Lord. It's always kind of one of those need to know basis. And bless God, when I need to know, He'll come and He'll send the angel, and then I'll find out, and then I'm going, Oh boy, now what? Now what are we going to do? Isaiah 56, we're going to start in the first verse. And it says, Thus saith the Lord, Keep, keep you judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness is to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold of it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Now, notice how he, he puts that together in that second verse. He said, blessed is the man. So, evidently, the man that will keep Sabbath and not pollute Sabbath is going to do what? Be blessed. See, there, there, the thing that I keep saying over and over again, there are certain things that are automatic blessings in the Word of God. That there are certain things that you do. Now, for instance, Rosh Hashanah, which is the, is the, is the great time of repentance, that bless God that every Jew that's in the, on the face of this earth, will find a synagogue, the Orthodox, will find a synagogue, and they will attend synagogue during, during bless God, Rosh Hashanah, the, 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 the great time of repentance. Now, the reason they do that is because they have been taught that God has books in heaven, and one of the books that he has is a book that's called A Book of Good Success. And if you fulfill the things of Rosh Hashanah and you repent and do the things that are put there, you're, you know, you're supposed to uh, take care of somebody and, uh, secretly that can't take care of some, maybe a bill that they owe or this, that, or whatever. And bless God, remember your forefathers and honor their graves. And, and it go, you know, it goes, kind of goes on and on. There's a few other things that go in there that I'm not bringing to my remembrance right now. But the key is that at the end of that, if they do that, then bless God that Yom Kippur, after Yom Kippur, then their name is written in that book of having a good success. Now listen to me. They believe that that's the reason why they are the wealthiest people on the face of this earth. He said, well, I don't believe there's a book like that. They do. But I'm going to tell you what they do more importantly than worrying about that book. They fulfill the festival. Okay? That's a commandment of God that we will keep throughout our generations as a perpetual covenant, which means it's never ending. It goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And they're just smart. You now, see, they don't have Jesus, okay? But they're the richest people on the face of this earth. Now, how many of you uh, were blessed with being, and I'll get my hand up first, around and within the charismatic movement? Okay? Now, didn't that movement get to a whole lot of how we could have money? Sure did, didn't it? How many people got a million dollars after attending all that? Don't jump up and start testifying real quick. The only people that ended up with the money was the preachers. They were the only ones that had any of the money. The rest of us didn't have... The rest of us, bless God, we gave our money. Did it come in that way? No. It is, is, is there, for a fact, a way to be financially blessed? Yes, there is. There, there, there are, there are, it's, it is right. But what we in America look at, we look at being blessed to God in our pocketbooks. 
We don't look at the fact that we're healthy. We don't look at the fact that our children are into drugs. We don't look at the fact we have food on our tables, that we have water that we can drink, air that we can breathe. It's still evidently pure enough that we're not dying as of yet. But see, we don't see that. Let's go on. Third verse. Neither let the son of a stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs, that keep the Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Now listen to this. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons than of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Boy, that is strong, strong stuff, isn't it? Now, what about those that are out here that bless God that are not? In his hand. The eunuchs, for instance. What, now, now listen, because this is important to get a hold of. What, what about these, these people that just don't seem to have the eyes to see and the ears to see? At any time that they should choose to see, any time they should choose to hear, then they will be come in and they will be blessed. They will be blessed what? <laughs> I'm sorry, above and beyond. So you see, it's there for everybody. And, and even though you have to realize that right now, the position that we're in is what God is doing now is ringing the bell, if you will, for those that bless God that are are, the, are within His hand, that are the remnant, that are that of, of the house of Ephraim, the house of Joseph, the house of Israel itself. And He is drawing us out. And we have to, we're going to have to go out here and be courageous enough to take the stand. Now listen to me. So others, bless God, will be able to stand. Does that make sense? If we're not going to be courageous enough to make the stand and put up with the persecution, then bless God, then we're not going to pave the way. Now, we do know that the cross was, was we call it blood-bought. We were blood-bought, okay? It took, it took a death in order to bring forth the movement of, of what we call salvation, which is everything. Now, we're also going to be uh, required to bless God to make sacrifices. Yes, we are. And is it going to be easy? Nobody said it was going to be easy. Now, let's, let's go further. Also, the sons of strangers that join themselves unto the Lord to serve Him and to love the name of the Lord and to be servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my God. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for mine house shall be called an house of a prayer for all people. The Lord God will gather the outcasts of Israel, saith, yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. And that just simply means that those that have ears that want to hear, when they want to hear and they want to see, they'll be accepted to come in. And so therefore, God isn't going to leave anybody behind. So see, there are any excuses. That, that, the, one of the things that, that I, until we can get this movement bigger than it is now, what I'm, I would like to see happen is I would like to see the Messianic movement set down with me long enough that we could at least uh, uh, talk about some things and understand some things. The bless God that this movement isn't about uh, Judah. This movement is about who? It is about the lost tribes of Israel. Those lost tribes. See, God has promised that He will bring them home. And we're going to get to some of that here in a minute. And it's important to realize, again, that God is going to do exactly what God said He was going to do. Let's go to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. God's going to do exactly what He said He's going to do. And, and the old story is that hair lips the Pope. It's just going to have to hair lip the Pope because He's going to get it done. Now, He says, first 34, 1, And the word of the Lord came to Him, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be unto the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, should not the shepherds feed the flock. flocks. Now, now I'm going to tell you something. All scriptures will parallel itself at one time or another back to where we live. All right? And what this is doing is talking about the end time scenario now. It is not the truth that, that most of these shepherds are worried about feeding themselves and not worried about feeding the flocks. See, that, that goes back to what I preached so hard about the 25th chapter of Matthew uh, in the middle of that. 
when he said, and I will set the, the, the sheep upon my right hand and the goats upon my left. And it's like I said, the church for years has tried to get us to believe that those, those, those goats were the heathens. No, no, those goats are the church also. The, the key is that God never called us to build kingdoms. God called us to take care of the poor, take care of the hungry, take care of the ones that don't have clothes, take care of the sick. God didn't, didn't, God did not cause us to be, a, to be a country on welfare. It isn't the government's place to take care of the poor people. Guess whose place it is? It's the church's place. And guess what the church has done? We spent all of our money on the $20 million basketball court out back. And that's what we did. And now we're in trouble. Because what did he said? He said, I will cast them into what? Outer darkness. Who's he talking? Folks, he's talking to the church. That's the reason I keep saying it's time to wake up and smell the roses. This thing, this thing, the, the, if the church was right about this, then, 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 then somebody needs to shout it out. But they're not right. It's our place to take care of the poor. And I've told too many preachers, if you're out here and you're sitting in a church and you're in here and you're, and you're, bless God, you're doing all whatever you do and you're getting ready to build a million dollar basketball court out back. And bless God, and you're not taking care of the people. If there's anybody in that county that you got a church in, the bless God that's having to worry this winter of whether they're going to have heat or they're going to have food, then you're in trouble. That church is in trouble because they are the goats. And see, nobody wants to hear preaching like that. And the reason you don't want to hear preaching like that is because it makes the church look bad. I got news for you. The church made herself look that bad. That's just the way it's been. And again, what would have happened if the Catholics, if the Methodists, if the Baptists, and, and all Lutherans, the Episcopalians, and the Pentecostals, the Charismatic, everybody, everything I didn't even get around to naming. What if we somehow got rid of all those names and we just became children of God? What would happen with all the millions of dollars that come into those organizations every month? What would happen if that money was funneled and they sold their possessions and they took their money and laid it at the feet of the apostles and the apostles took the money and distributed it unto those according to their need. It'd be a different world, folks. This is the United States of America would be a different America. But you know what this is about in America? Get all I can get as soon as I can get it and want more to get after I done got it. And that's what America's about. Now, whatever we have, we want more. We're not worried about the people down the street. Oh, I'll, I'll pray for you, brother, and probably never open our mouth, period. Okay, let's go on. Now, it says, the diseased ye have not strengthened. Now, this again, you put the church right in all this. Neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Isn't that what religion, a religious spirit is? You bet it is. And they were scattered because there, there is no shepherd. And they became meat and all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon all the high hills. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. Now he's talking about the lost tribes. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my, block, my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, and they, and they may meet for the, and be meat for them. Now listen to me prophetically. When these, when these catastrophes, and I think that's probably a good enough word, uh, talking about the thing about the bird flu, talking about the other the other uh, uh, diseases that are going to be paramount that's going to come upon this earth, come in, uh, uh, that's when these pastors will cease. Listen to me as a prophet. They will cease. When they start listening to the people coming to their doors, beating on those doors, 
Pastor, pa- wh- Pastor, what's what's wrong? I, I don't understand, Pastor. We we gave it, went, we attended every week. We were in our place every week. We gave our money, you know, and we come to all the Sunday uh, meetings and we did all the things we ought to do. Now, now, Pastor, wh- what's wrong? What what what's wrong? Where's the ninety first Psalm at, Pastor? I don't understand. You know why why am I why are my children dying? Why's my wife died? What's going on with all this stuff with these diseases? Then people's going to get the idea that they are full of hot air and that's all that they have been. Then they will find out. But not until then. And that's the reason, that's the reason that, bless God, that, that what I do is, 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 is so grassroots and it's so hard to get off the ground is because the people are still holding on. You understand? They're still trying, they're riding a dead horse and they don't know it's dead. They don't have any idea why it's dead. But as I've told you and openly told you, the 91st Psalm never belonged to the church ever. It belongs to the law. If it belonged to the church, then why in the world didn't it work? Why didn't it work in Katrina? Why didn't it work in, uh, in Indonesia when that great tsunami that came? Why has it not worked? And, and I'm going to tell you the same thing. It's not going to work for those people that don't understand this thing. God is bringing us to a new era. God, anytime that God brings revelation knowledge, then God then begins. Listen to me. When a prophet of God comes into an area, the time and the day of that visitation from God is upon them. And the decisions that they make is going to directly, bless God, is going to directly affect them and their families for the rest of their days on the face of this earth. God isn't playing a game with this thing. I'm not here because I need somewhere to be this weekend. I'm here because this is what God wanted me this weekend. If He wanted me here, then He's got something in all this that He wanted me to say, something that He wanted me to, to, to plant, because when a prophet speaks uh, prophetically, then in the supernatural world we plant things into the spirit world that will in the end come up over into the flesh side. Somebody say amen. And he says, the 11th verse, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Now God said, I'll do that, didn't He? Now how's He doing that? Well, you're, you're looking at the vessel, one of the vessels He's using now. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that, that, that he is among his sheep and are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the country and I will bring them to their own land. Now, where is their own land? Israel. And feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the, of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall, shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock. I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek. Now, listen to this next verse. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up all which which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and I will feed them with judgment. Now, that's God's promise. Now, talking about who? Ephraim, the northern, the northern ten tribes that were lost. He said, I am going to search them out. I'm going to bring them back. I'm going to, another scripture we read. I'm going to forgive their sins, and I, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to place them there. Now, when God brings brings us back to that land, there's a possibility that there's about 60 million of us. Okay. Now, the fact of it is that somebody said that there were somewhere uh, 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 about six million, and I don't know where that counts right either. But let's just we'll use that number just for for the figures. Six million Jews that are known, okay? Then there's ten times more of us, so there's 60 million of us. Can you understand now why when we put all this together, we all go back to, because we're going to Israel. We're going home. That's the promise. We're going home. Can you understand now why the deserts are going to bloom? Can you understand now why we're going to plant in places where nothing grew and it's going to grow? There's going to be so many of us taking up so much area that bless God. What's, I mean, you know, they're they're going to oh, they're going to have a kitten. Let's just put it that way. But uh, you know, the old story is they will get they will get over that. And and see, and as God placed these pieces in front of me for 25 years, I preached transition. And then now, within the last couple of years, God has begun 
to lay this thing out before me. And I get so excited, there's nights I can't sleep. Bless God, the angel came and the, the angel said to me, and that hadn't been all that long ago, said unto me, said, your cry, your cry unto Ephraim will be like unto that of Moses' cry as to Egypt. Let my people go. Only your cry is going to be to the church. Now this, I, I love this when this stuff happens because, you know, I'm not real well liked anyway. And, and then when I'm going to start saying, church, God said let my people go. Now that's going to go over like a lead balloon. <laughs> who do you think you are? Huh? Deckard who? And then I get called all those, all those things, you know, that, that, that go along with the things that go along with that. But he said, you will do that. Now listen to me. And I, we, I don't think we're going to get the Scripture here with this. But you can study and you're going to find out that maybe we will get to that this weekend. I, I don't remember. But if it did, I'm ahead of it, okay? But we, we find out in the Scripture that the Scripture says that there will one day, there will be such a great exodus that will come, bring back the people of God and Israel, Ephraim, the ten lost tribes, that they will no longer talk about the exodus out of Egypt. Listen to me. At most, there could only have been about four to four and a half million people come out of Egypt, at most. The most of the theological uh, the, the brains of the world have always thought there was probably somewhere around two and a half or three million. But at absolutely most, they say that it, w it could have been that. We're talking folks have taken 60 million people back to Israel. And you know who knows about that besides me and you? Not very many right now, but they're going to. We're going home. It's in the book. It is written. It's written in the volume. And God has to fulfill what He wrote and put it into the volume of the book. We're going to go home. We're going to go through hell first, but we're going to go home. And I'm going to tell you what, we're going to take Brother Judah by the hand and we're going to walk up that holy hill together. How many of you people have, have any uh, uh, insight uh, to any of the stuff that's going on over in Jerusalem now to understand how the prime minister of the land right now, uh, and they're talking about selling the Temple Mount. Huh? Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, they can't seem to understand, can they? They need to go look at old Sharon, uh, Sharon where he's at. You know? They need to understand. Quit giving away our land. The Jews are not the, the 12 tribes of Israel. They're not. I told them, I said, I'm tired of hearing the Jew this, Jew that, the Jews this. The Jew. I said, you act like you are Israel. And you want know one rabbi I said, well, we are. I said, no, you're not. You're not Israel. Bless God, you are one part of Israel. You are Judah, the small tribe of the Benjamites and what Levites that are left around of the Levitical priesthood. I said, being a Jew myself, but you see, God sent this Jew to take hold of Ephraim's hand and say, come on, my brother. Come on, my brother. Let me begin to show you the ways of the Father. Let me begin to show you the things that will bless you, bless your family. Let me begin to show you the commandments of God that will bring you through these plagues that are getting ready to unfold themselves on the face of this earth. Because they are going to unfold themselves. So he goes on to say, now I'm somewhere in here now. <laughs> Help! I knew it, thank you. I Thank you. I, 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 well, I almost knew it. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I want to quit right there at 16. That's where we're going to quit. But he said, I, I will seek that which was lost. He said, I'm going to seek him out. And he is going to seek this out. Now let's go to the, the, the book of Hosea. And so I said, you know, uh, until until this this came, this revelation knowledge came here, the book of Hosea was was never able to be interpreted uh, even close to being correct. I mean, people tried to preach out of it, and there's a few things and verses that they'd use. But when you begin to look at this thing, you begin to look at, at like, and for instance, again, I know we've been through this, but the seventh chapter of Hosea in the eighth verse says, Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. What is that? Among the Gentiles. Ephraim is a cake not turned. What does that mean? He's, Ephraim is done on Christianity, but he's not done on the wall side. 
How is it with the with Ju with with Judah? Judah is done on the law side and not done on what on the Christian side. So when what when this thing comes together and the time of the Gentiles is at an end, which folks we are there, okay? Then we're going to see what we're going to see. Brother Judah do something they swore up down. They'd never do too. Okay, you see, this is going to be as hard for them to go back and lick that calf again. Okay, as we say, as it is for the church to swallow the fact that they are the lost tribes of Israel. It's going to be just, but you see, revelation knowledge from God is revelation knowledge. There isn't, there isn't any other way. I mean, uh, you know, somebody said, well, now, now, <clears throat> now, uh, Prophet Deckard, uh, uh, we have all the DNA already, and we have found, uh, we found all the lost tribes. I said, how could you found them? They're lost. <laughs> you might as well go out here and take the DNA of a pig. Huh? God forbid, being a Jew. <laughs> I said, there is no way in this world that you could Take DNA and find the ten lost tribes of Israel. There's nobody to who any, meeny, miny, mo. You, 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 and you. You must be the no, 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 no. I remember the charismatic movement uh, uh, getting around people that would would uh, tell you what tribe you were from. Oh, I love that part. You know, along with giving them all my money, then I was dumb enough to, uh, you know. Well, I, the problem was uh, I knew, that, that, you know, at, being a Jew, it's a little hard to. And when they tell you they think you're from Zebulun or something like that. Uh, you know, you're just standing kind of, you, you know, you know better, but, uh, that's the kind of jokes that went around. Now, in the eighth chapter of Hosea, and starting in the first verse, it says, Set the, the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant, and transpassed against my law, and trespassed, I'm sorry, against my law. See, now, what's he saying? Set your mouth, set your mouth to the trumpet. And because he said they have done this, they they have transgressed the covenant, they have trespassed against the law. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good, and the enemy shall pursue him. Uh, now, what was good? Now, here talking about Israel again is Ephraim. Okay, what what was what is good? The law was good for him, and they have set up kings, but not of me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Have silver and gold have they made them idols that they may be cut off? Thy calf, O Samaria, hath ca cast thee off. Mine anger is kindled against them. How long will it be ere they attain to innocency? For from Israel was it also. The workmen made it. Therefore it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. For they have sown in the wind, and they shall reap, reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk. The bud shall Yield no meal, it, it, it yield, the, the strangers shall swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up, now shall they become, they, they shall be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein to no pleasure. So again, that's, that's scriptural uh, confirmation that Israel got, uh, what, caught up with the Gentiles. So again, uh, here we are, we got caught up and we call this a Gentile church. We don't know any better, but we weren't supposed to know any better, all right? For as they are gone up to Assyria while asses alone by himself, Ephraim hath hard lovers. Yea, though they have hard among the nations, now I will gather them, and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. But he says, I'm going to gather them. Because Ephraim hath made many alders to sin, alders shall be unto him the sinner. I have written to him, listen, the great things of my law. Now this is under what we call the Gentile church, but they were counted as a strange thing. Isn't that exactly what we look at the law being in the church? Oh, that's a strange. Oh, now we don't need that. Nope, nope, nope. That's bondage. Nope, nope. You don't got Jesus no more. How many of you heard that one? Now, yeah, if you haven't, you will. Now it goes on to say, They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifice of mine offerings and eat it, but the Lord accepted them not. Now will he remember their iniquity, visit their sins, and they shall return to Egypt. For the Israel hath begotten his maker. And, and buildeth temples, and Judith and multiplied fence cities, and I will send far upon his cities, and it shall devour uh, the palaces uh, thereof. And that should be all I'm doing with that. Now, in Amos 9.9. 9. Now, 9.9. 9. Okay, did you find Amos? If you did, say amen. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. Now, who's the house of Israel? Ephraim, the northern kingdom. Now, how's he going to do? Sift us among all nations. 
like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet it shall not the, the least grain fall upon the earth. He said, what's he going to do? He said, I'm going to, I'm going to spring, I'm going to put them among all the nations. I'm going to scatter them. I, they're, they're going to, you know, they're going to be, they're going to become Gentiles. They're not going to know who they are. They're not going to know the color of their skin. The, the tongue that they speak, they won't know, be known by. In other words, God said, then that's the reason we have been called what? The lost tribes of Israel. That's what Yeshua himself said. I'm not sent, but in the house of uh, uh, the lost tribes of Israel. He said that that's 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 who I'm sent to, and he said that's and that's exactly what uh, that's exactly what I intend to intend to do. Let's go to Ephesians two, and probably I'm going to finish up there for tonight. Ephesians two, the twelfth verse. Now, Ephesians two twelve, it says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make to himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Now, you know, here's the thing that you don't want to miss about all this. The, 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 the entire reason of why the Father, Yahweh, sent his Son, Yeshua, to this earth was to be able to give all the peoples of the earth the opportunity to once and for all have a sacrifice that would never have to be another sacrifice made to get you eternal life or the remission of sins, all right? And so that was his, that was his primary mission to this earth, was to do that. And, and again, when you study, and you study completely, you begin to see something, <coughs> excuse me, that what he came to do was a continuation of what the Father had started and had done anyway. That there was different times and places where he brought covenants that worked. There were some parts of the covenant which he said that was what? Was perpetual, that they were everlasting, and that they would never end. And then he would seal it by saying, I am the Lord thy God, which is a spiritual uh, a signet that bless God that means it's an eternal stamp. In other words, that will never be changed. It doesn't matter whether you're a Baptist, you're a Pentecostal, you're a Catholic, a Charismatic, a Methodist. Uh, uh, you see, again, what we did is we decided to get smarter than God and we decided to vote. Now, uh, I, I have had some people write to me and say, boy, have we been stupid and how could we have been stupid for so long not to have understood what you teach about the Sabbath? Well, I can tell you why we have been stupid, or you have been stupid for that long, is because you're without knowledge. My people are destroyed because what? The lack of knowledge. It doesn't say the knowledge isn't there. The knowledge is there. It's called revelation knowledge, but it is only brought as God wants our eyes to be opened up so that we can see. Okay? And so uh, and that's the reason that from generation to generation, uh, he did differently. Now, when Yeshua came, what what was what was that revelation knowledge that he said that and Paul said Paul said it best he said that that you know that that he came and did what the law couldn't do what can't the law do Rosh Hashanah that's coming the, the during that time they sacrificed that lamb for the sins of Israel and for one year there was atonement made that their sins that were forgiven now the Yeshua uh, Mashiach came that bless God. He now had done it once and for all for all mankind. So what the law couldn't do, and that's what Paul was saying, what the law couldn't do, now Yeshua has come and he's done that. So what was that? It was a continuation of where God was going. I mean, you can go all the way back through the Testaments and you can find out, or through the, 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 the writings of the prophets, and you can, hear, you can hear through that the shadows of the coming of Yeshua. And he came and he did what he was to do. But what, what we get mixed up in this thing is that somehow, and I've always used it this way because it makes, I think it gets the point across, that somehow we think the sun showed up 
and took over the business and the father retired. And that's somehow what we in the church thought happened. And that's just not what took place. He came, he said, I didn't come to change any of this. He said, I and the father are what? We're one. So how could the father being over here saying, keep my, keep my commandments, and the, and the son over here saying, uh, don't keep the commandments anymore. I'm taking over the business. Now, folks, a little bit of common sense will take you a long way in a lot of things. And, and it will take you a long way in this. And that's the reason I said when you get to looking at this thing and then you get to realizing that, bless God, why didn't, why didn't somebody study back in to this thing with this Sabbath thing? Why didn't somebody, bless God, try to figure this all this thing out? Why didn't somebody just take Amos 3, 3, 7 and understand that, bless God, that you can't be coming up with a dream about a, about a, a church leaving the earth and some pastor call it the catching away of the rapture and all of a sudden we've got the rapture taking place. That doesn't count, folks. It has to come out of an absolutely bona fide, uh, bless God, whatever it is from God prophet, that's the way it works. He says, I'll do, he says, I will do nothing except I do what? Reveal my secrets through my servants, the prophets. Yes. Okay, that's what he says. So when I look at that, I go, man, what a bunch of dummies. But you know what it is? God blinded us. He blinded us. Why? Because he wanted us to get all the revelation knowledge up to this point in time where he brought us now so he can take us on into this thing. And guess what? then we can do exactly what it is that God has intended for us to do. See, folks, God knew you were going to be here tonight. More than that, God knows what He wants to do with you in the tomorrows. And what God is saying is, boys and girls, wake up. You are a chosen generation. You are of a royal priesthood. And God is calling you into action. Now, you can do with it whatever you want to do with it. My place is not, bless God, it's not to bless God to coerce you into anything. My place is to present you truth as a prophet. Your place is to decide whether you think it's truth or not. And the only thing I can tell you to do is don't take my word for it. You better go home. And if you don't know how to fast and pray, you better learn. Because this isn't a thing to be taken from anybody. You've got to know down deep inside here that this thing's of God. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. You'll know why. Because God will do what? God, God will he'll 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 put it he'll he'll put it to you. You'll understand. Uh, but uh, in the twentieth verse it says, "And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone." Notice what He says that that being built on the foundation of who? The apostles and the prophets. Well, if it was going to only be be built, bless God, on the foundation of the pro, of the apostles, which Bless God, in the what we call the New Testament, uh, you don't read a whole lot. There's some said in there about prophets, but all of a sudden, the word apostles start showing up, all right? So you can do with that whatever you want to do with it. I know there's, there's different ways of looking at that. We won't get into that tonight. But what I want to close with the, this evening is simply the fact that you have to understand that, bless God, that there is one God, okay? There's not a God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament. There's one set of rules for both sides, and there's one family. There's one people. There's not, there's not two sets of people. See, what we've got, what it looks like with Christianity, there's two groups. There's, there's us, and then there's them. Okay? And them over there got a set of rules, but <laughs> they don't got Jesus, so they can't be right. And yet, like I said, they're the richest and the healthiest people in the world, and they don't got Jesus standing right over there. You see, there's something about this Jew boy that gets real curious about people and success. I get to wondering, what makes them so successful? What makes them so healthy over there? What is that all about over there? You know what it is? They just simply follow what's in the book. And if they can simply follow what's in the book and not have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then what happens with those of us that do have Him? Now listen to me. And we just do what's in the book. Now listen to me. That is when we will provoke the Jews to great jealousy. We're going to take the law that they say and that they keep. We're going to keep the, the things that God says to keep. Okay, the, 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 fe the festivals and Shabbat and New Moon. And uh, then we're going to raise the dead in the name of Yeshua. The one that they hung upon the tree. 
And it's going to provoke them to no end. They're not going to be a bit, you know, they're not going to be a bit happy over the whole deal. But it's like I said, they will get over it. And that's the reason I keep saying to a lot of the Messianic movement, you've got to be careful here with what you're doing. We're spending more time. See, we're spending, now we're spending, what we did was we jumped, got out of the ditch over here. And we drug them out of the ditch instead of bringing them in the middle of the road and keeping the testimony of Yeshua. We come over here, now we're throwing them over here on this side of the ditch, and all we know is the latest Hebrew dances. All that's all, you know, we know all of that. We know how to speak Hebrew now, and we know how to do all that, but we never could work the works of God, and we didn't understand faith that would raise the dead. You understand what I'm saying? It takes a balance, folks. And what the Messianic movement's doing is they think all they needed was that over there, and most of them never worked the works over here to start out with. So without that balance, and that's the reason I said down the corn patch, I'm going to bring the name of it, is what I said, the kind of faith that will raise the dead. I'm going to teach you how to raise the dead. Bless God, you got everything inside of you that I got inside of me. Bless God, you get the Spirit of God's in you like the Spirit of God's in me. And bless God, I get excited when I start talking like this because I know that it's going to happen. I know what God promised me well, all the way back when I'm standing out there, I think it was 127 degrees in, in India. I'd done three meetings, and bless God, you could literally take the socks off of my feet and wring water out of them, and my shoes were wet, and I'm sitting there, and bless God, there's no fan. The water, there's no cool water. It's all hot water, and you're sitting there drinking this water, and I'm saying, God, is this ever going to change? And all of a sudden, the room lights up, and the Lord God said, look and see. I saw this. I saw the remnant of God coming out. And they were coming out of the churches like rats leaving a ship. And bless God, they were coming forth. They were speaking the name of Yeshua and the dead were coming up. And God said, so shall it be in the last days, son. So shall it be. This is the last days. This is the time of your visitation. Don't miss it. Don't miss what God is trying to do in your life. Don't let the persecution of your family and your friends steal away from you. Don't you stand before the Lord God and have to hear God say, I sent the prophet! Why didn't you listen and do? Don't have that happen to you in the last day, an hour that you have to stand before Him because it's going to happen. This isn't a game. This isn't something again for me to do. Bless God, I, I've, got, I've got plenty of things I could be doing besides being here tonight. I'm here because it's the time of visitation. You're going to make a difference. Listen to me. You're going to make the difference in an entire state. This group here can do that. The group in Milwaukee can do it over in Wisconsin. The group down in Indiana can do it in Indiana. The group over in Michigan do it in Michigan. You're going to make the difference. This difference isn't going to be made by one man, one prophet. That's not what this is about. This is the move of the body of Yeshua. It's got nothing to do with a one-man show. You need to get that through your head. God, God is about to do it in you. And for me, I'm going, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. It's finally going to be fine. They'd take me out of those fields in, in India where they held the great crusades and they, they, they put up fences and they were about that tall and they, they'd be about this wide and I might have to walk a quarter of a mile to get to, to whatever means they was going to try to get me back to wherever I was going to stay for the night. And they, they, the Indian people start, they'd climb the fences and they knock the fences down and they would get out there and they would grab my feet and literally kiss my feet and I just couldn't stand it. I finally turned around to that pastor and I said, Pastor, I can't handle this. I said, they're, they're praising the wrong, the wrong old boy here. It's him, not me. And that pastor the prophet, he said, they know that it's God. They're giving you great honor. I said, why honor me? I'm a piece of flesh and blood like they're a piece of flesh and blood. See, that's the reason I, I, I said what I've said tonight about the laying on of hands. You, you can speak you can speak the name of Yeshua. You can believe God. See, that's the reason the petition was torn down 
so that you and I can enter in. You don't, bless God, you don't have to be a prophet to get to the throne room of God. You don't have to be a prophet to raise the dead. You don't have to be a prophet for the blind to see. Not any longer you don't have to be. Or there are always going to be prophets, believe you me. But the fact of the matter is, it's the body's turn. And we're going to go back and we're going to unlearn some things to learn some things. You know, that unlearning process is a whole lot harder than the learning process, isn't it? Why? Because that old spirit of religion is back there tugging on it. Oh, I, oh, oh, I don't know. Well, now I don't know about that part. Now, you know, the next thing you're going to be talking about now is going to be them kosher laws. And, well, now I'm dying on that, that bondage. And I just want to stay out of the bondage. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not going to let you get into bondage. And we're not getting into two refrigerators and two sets of dishes and two stoves and. And all those things were not, no, no, that's not what this is about. This isn't about that. What God said to eat, He said it because it's healthy for us. You want to live a long, healthy life? Just eat what God says to eat. God's right, folks. And that, that, that's what I'm, trying, what I'm trying to get at in all this is He set this thing up not for us to be the losers, not for us to be sitting around. You see, again, we're the winners. And I'm talking about the church. We're the winners. And yet, when you look around and you go to church Sunday morning and you get bright-eyed and you look around, you're not going to see many people acting like winners. And the ones that are acting like winners, now listen to me, I love this one. Well, they're operating most of them in faith, okay? Because most of them after church is over, they're either in the back room or they're out in the vestibule or somewhere going, oh my, pray for me, my, I'm just, just going through all kind of hell. And that's the way it is, folks. But I'm here to tell you something, that He came to make us more than overcomers. The devil's not your problem. I'm here to tell you, the devil is not your problem. Your problem is a lack of knowledge. That's the problem. The curse, the curse is in the earth because of the fact that we did away with the law. When we did away with the law, then we cursed ourselves. It was already placed in the earth by God. God said this day, I put before you blessings and cursings, uh, death, life and death, and you choose. And we have chosen. This isn't, this, isn't, this isn't something that, bless God, that just came on us overnight. We made some decisions and we chose, okay? And we chose badly. Why did we choose badly? Well, let's see. We started out with the emperor of Rome, Constantine, and this wicked mother of his that said she was a Christian that killed thousands of us to prove her point, and to set up a new Sabbath for us. Was she a prophet? Did she fulfill 3,700? No, she didn't fulfill anything besides being a wicked old woman. That's all that she fulfilled. Now, why didn't somebody say, well, wait a minute. Why didn't somebody do that? Why is it that we didn't keep the festival of Passover, Pesach, and we do the festival of what? Easter. Where in the world did that come from? And folks, and it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. And what I'm saying is, we've got a lot of things going on here that, that God's got nothing to do with. Nothing to do with. The exciting thing is, and tomorrow we're going to finally get into the parts of this that I wanted to get in tonight and I couldn't, but I'll finish it, try to finish this up in the first segment tomorrow where we can uh, we can go on to the rest of the stuff we want to do. If not, we'll have to get it in. The, let's see, we've got a 10 o'clock, and then we've got a 2 o'clock, and then we've got a 7 o'clock, so we'll, we'll get it in. We'll stand up and we're going to...